Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are loads of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. You can download those in US Letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can access information about the books that I have available. I've written How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's an exam technique guide and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make best use of the time when you're actually in the exam room on exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com, it's all there for you. If you can give me a like, that'd be really fab, and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And now we're going to crack on with the last of the general exercises in Grade 5. This is the very last part of this workbook. So if you turn with me to page 56, at the very, very back of your book, you'll find general exercise 4. And we've been using these as a revision exercise to refresh your memory on topics that you might have covered as far back as grade one. Remember that this is an accumulation of everything you've covered in grades one, two, three, four, and five. I suggest that you have a crack at this. I'm gonna give you directions where to look to find the answers and just have a crack at it. It doesn't matter if you're wrong. So just dip out of the video, have a go and then come back into the video and we'll work through this together. We're never writing in pencil, nice sharp pencil, and you've got your trusty eraser to hand, so if uh, something goes wrong, it doesn't matter, you can rub it out and have another go. You'll learn better with your mistakes. And so I'll just give you um, little headings, little chapter headings to help you to find where to revert back to, to find the necessary information to answer these questions all of these questions on this exercise are referring to this little bit of music here. And so we're asked what kind of time the music is in. They've given us a bit of a clue what they're after. And you'll find this in Grade 5, Section A. We're asked just a general information. What are the four instruments that form a string quartet? And that's what we've got here down into a, a a closed score in a condensed form and so um, we get a bit of a hint of that in grade 5 section M but it's just a bit of a general knowledge question so have a crack at it if you don't know just guess and you will learn by your mistakes when we go through this and discuss it together we've got a few terms to um, revise we've got um, this one you'll find in grade 4 Section M, I think, or is that is it M? Might be L. That that might be L actually. I wonder if I've got the wrong L or M are together in a in a s section together. So L and M together. Can't think off the top of my head. But they come together in the video and at the end of the section. So it could be either one of those sections, just off the top of my head. Uh, this next one we come across in grade 2i. This one occurred not long ago, so you might just still remember that one. And this one occurs in grade 4 again in sections L or M. Now this question here, we've got to describe this notation. This is never actually um, specifically described. It's a general knowledge question and the first starting point to find the answer to this will be found in grade 4L and uh, grade 5M. Um, the grade 4 is M actually, sorry, it's grade 5. I should know this off the top of my head by now. So it's grade 4M and it's 5L and M are together. That's I do remember that now. There we go. Okie dokie. Um, so you might just have to make a bit of a stab at this and then we'll talk about that afterwards. We have uh, some melodic intervals to name and we can find that first referred to in grade 4H. Now 
we've been asked about brackets around certain accidentals and that's just kind of a general question and we've discussed that in um, the previous exercise why that would be the case perhaps um, just a bit of a clue there but we first talk about the accidentals in grade 1 J and then we get to ask we are asked to rewrite the upper part of the base stave in the alto clef and we first talk about that in grade 4 section B and so I think it's perhaps time to just crack on and have a go and then when you've had a go re-access into the video and we'll talk about these answers together so I'm hoping you've had a go of this and so what they're asking in question A is they're looking for us to tell them that it's in quintuple time as in five beats and a bar What are the four instruments that form a string quartet? Now we did actually cover this um, in the previous exercise, so it may be that you've remembered it from that. That might just give you a start, although we didn't um, cover it entirely. So we have violin one, or first violin you could say. We have violin two, or you could say second violin. We also have the viola and we have the cello, that's your string quartet. So we have some um, musical directions to explain here. Uh, vif means lively. If you remember SF, we talked about that previously not long ago and that was forced. And then this is short for pizzicato which means pluck the strings, so that's a specific string direction. Rather than using the bow, they're being directed to pluck the strings. This next question is also um, appropriate to the string instrument here. It's like a, what they've been asked to do is rapid or bowing, and so what actually happens is these are played as if they were semiquavers so really if you say play as semiquavers that will suffice so we're just lots of rapid semiquavers now we've got something a little bit more tangible than you perhaps used to we're asked to name the melodic intervals so melodic intervals means intervals that come one after another if you remember and quavers in bar three, quavers one and two, one and two, two to three, and three and four. So we've got these groups here. So the first set is this one here, where we know we've got a one, three, five, we've got a fifth of some sort, and we've got a D flat to an A flat, and that would be a perfect fifth. Let's look at the next one. So here we're going from A flat to F. So we've got a one, three, five, six, a sixth of some sort. And if A flat is considered to be our keynote, our low tonic in terms of describing the interval, A flat major would have F naturals. So it's part of the major scale. And so we describe that as a major sixth. And then here we've got quavers three to four. So we're just looking in the bass part here. And we've got one, three, fourth. We've got a fourth. Now if F is considered to be our key note, F to B flat would be a perfect fourth. So if you just picture that, F to B flat would be perfect. We've raised the B flat with the natural sound, we've extended the interval, we've augmented it, and so we've got an augmented fourth. So that's that one. There we go. Now, why do you think brackets have been put around the three accidentals in the upper part of the treble? So we've got here, 
and you'll notice that in each case we've got a G natural, an F natural, and then we've got a B flat, which is already part of the key. Each one of those is um, really uh, quite redundant. They don't actually change the fact. There's no G sharps or G flats going on, and so it's just to uh, reassure or remind the player in this upper upper string that they are definitely playing the G natural. It isn't strictly necessary, but because the lower string is playing a G sharp, or here the lower string is playing an F sharp, um, it's just to show that, that they are to be playing the natural signs. If you remember, the reason I um, referred you to grade one, section J, is that in the video, I think I mentioned that an accidental is for that pitch only. So although this G sharp is in play in this pitch, it isn't effective here. And so that natural sign isn't really required. It's automatically a G natural. The G sharp doesn't translate the octave. However, they just put the natural sign to reassure the player that yes, you definitely play the natural and you've got a decided intentional clash with the lower part. And here, the B flat is in a bracket because of course, anything that's happened in previous bars, so here in the lower part, the B natural, it, it would be cancelled anyway, even in the same part by the bar line. So even were it to be appropriate, the bar line would cancel it, but it's just reiterating that it's definitely B flat the bar lines cancelled it and it's a previous part, you are definitely playing what the key signature said. So, how to put that into words? We'll just say, uh, to remind players an accidental only refers to a particular octave. I think that will suffice. You could also say to clarify um, clash between violin one and violin two is intentional. Maybe that will also clarify the situation. There we go. And so now we're going to look at the upper part of the bass stave in bars three and four. So here we're looking at the upper part where the stems are pointing upwards. And we're going to write that in the alto clef without changing how it will sound. And so we need to just figure out middle C as our anchor point. And so here is middle C in the bass clef. And we're on C, E, G, B above middle C. And so let's just get our alto clef. So the alto clef is where middle C is on this middle line. So we'll just hook around those with a double bar line. So the B flat will be placed just below the middle line in that space down. And so we need to find the B, C, E, G, B here above middle C. And then if you'll notice the natural sign and so we'll just transfer that. We're not transposing anything, we're just transferring it into a new clef. And so we're going to go down a third. That's the G and it's sharpened. And then go down again another third. And that's the E which is sharpened. So we can have a bar line now. And then we're now going to be, if you notice, we are one step below middle C. We've come down three, four, four, 
4 takes us one step below middle C and so we're there. We need a natural sign. Up a step. Get a bit squished there. I've got loads of room. No need to squish so much. Down a third. Back up a step, but this time the flat is back. And then, sorry, we need a natural sign. Same pitch. So we can join all of those together with a beam. And then we need these marks to tell us to play them as semiquavers. So we repeat that note as a semiquaver rather than just writing the same note several times. And so we can add our bar line and we just need one little slur mark and some stems. There we go, and that's that completed. I do hope that you found that helpful. I hope that it's um, been a worthwhile pursuit working through this Grade 5 Music Theory and Practice Workbook. I hope you've enjoyed it just as much as I have. There's still lots to come, so if you can subscribe to my channel to keep updated, you won't miss out. Give me a like, there's loads to come. I hope that that's been beneficial to you. Please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the information that's available to you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.